Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. We've all seen the graveyards of electric vehicles in places where they have no business being charged during winter. Now, as most of you already know, those electric vehicles are using some type of lithium-based battery technology. Well, the Achilles heel of lithium-based battery technologies is the cold. We can discharge them down below freezing, but we certainly cannot charge them below freezing, at least not without warming them up first. So since this topic is already in the news, I thought it would be a great time to show you how I protect my lithium iron phosphate batteries in the off-grid ham shack, and how that solution also keeps me warm when I'm operating or creating content from here. All right, guys, stick with me, and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Now, as you can imagine, if my ham shack were in the house, it really wouldn't matter because we have a massive fireplace in there, which warms the entire house. It would have been excellent installing a wood stove in the ham shack, but unfortunately it's too small and there simply wasn't enough space. So I had to come up with a different solution. What you're looking at here is a diesel heater. It's the type of heater normally installed in some sort of tractor trailer or lorry, a van or RV or some other type of vehicle to heat the inside space during the winter. Now, just like the diesel motor in a car or a truck, this one has a glow plug, which is used to ignite the diesel in a combustion chamber, diesel which comes from an external tank. As I mentioned in the introduction of this video, one of the primary reasons for heating the ham shack is taking care about the lithium-based solar storage we're using there. Now we can discharge the lithium iron phosphate batteries below freezing, but we certainly can't charge them. This is probably the only downside to lithium iron phosphate. Unlike lead acid batteries, we can't charge them if they're below freezing, not without damaging them anyway. For this reason, I chose an off-grid source of heat for the ham shack to keep myself warm when operating and to keep the batteries above freezing so that we can charge them with solar power. The diesel heater comes from Vivor. It's got three main components plus a diesel reservoir. The core of the system, of course, is the diesel heater itself. This is a 3 kilowatt model from Vivor. Now I decided on this modular version for the ham shack. There is a standalone version which is completely integrated, fuel tank included. I chose this one because I wanted the freedom of installing it inside of an enclosure where I could mount an external fuel tank and the electronics and things like that, even the battery and charge controller for the solar panel, which tops up the battery that powers the glow plug. The next component in the system is the control panel. Now, the wiring for the control panel goes through the wall along with the ducting to bring the control panel inside the ham shack. Now, because of the extreme temperatures we sometimes get here in winter, I use the diesel heater in thermostat mode. This means I set a specific temperature inside the ham shack and the diesel heater maintains it automatically. Naturally, when I'm in the ham shack operating, I will set that temperature at a higher, more comfortable level. When I just want to maintain the batteries, keeping them above freezing, I'll set it just above freezing. Now, so far, this works extremely well. However, it doesn't work quite as I'd like it to. I'd like the thermostat to actually shut down the diesel heater when it reaches a certain temperature in the ham shack. Then, once the temperature drops to a certain level, restart the diesel heater to maintain the desired temperature. Now, this functionality exists, but it comes from a third party. As soon as it arrives, I'll do a blog post outlining or... The next part of the system are the vents and ducting, both of which are already included when you buy the diesel heater. The ducting is some sort of corrugated metal which expands or contracts when you pull it or compress it. The vents that come along with the kit are some sort of polycarbonate or plastic. I'm not really sure which, but they seem like good quality. What I've done is mount the diesel heater outside the ham shack. I ran the ducting from the diesel heater through the wall into the ham shack 
where I placed a vent on the other end of the ducting to terminate it. All of this has worked extremely well so far. So I hope that first part of the video wasn't too abstract. We talked about the uh, probably the only problem we have with lithium iron phosphate or even other lithium uh, battery chemistries. We talked about their Achilles heel, which is being charged in the cold. We talked about the uh, diesel heater and uh, how it was mounted and how it actually works and how I hope it's going to work in the future. So why did I choose a diesel heater rather than uh, propane or a wood stove? I think I mentioned the wood stove earlier. I don't have room for it in here. But uh, why didn't I use propane or a kerosene heater? Or so the answer like is not so simple, but uh, here goes. We can store up to a thousand liters. What is that in gallons, guys? Somebody please write it in the comments. We can store up to a thousand liters of diesel or heating fuel uh, in a residential space. That's by law, you know, because people still heat their homes with uh, heating oil, which is basically the same as diesel fuel. Another reason for choosing a diesel heater is basically the cost of the heater. I mean, it cost me about uh, 100 euros, or what is that, uh, 88 bucks, something like that. And uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 uh, euros or uh, 10 bucks for delivery to my door. So um, I really can't knock it. The price of diesel fuel when you buy it from the station is quite high these days. Um, I don't know how the truckers can make any profit. But anyway, it's abundant. And uh, not only that, I can run the diesel heater on waste oil or vegetable oil. or uh, There are certain methods also we can use to make uh, biodiesel. We haven't done that yet, but we know how. Now, another reason for using the diesel heater was its ability to be controlled, to program how it actually operates. Having a thermostat that turns on or turns off at a certain time or maintains a certain heat or is triggered by a certain temperature, this is actually critical because I want to keep, when I'm not actually in here, the radios are still operating, the Windlink gateway, the JSA call station, everything is still operating, but I need to trigger the diesel heater to actually start heating uh, before the uh, ham shack drops below uh, freezing. So that's one of the reasons for that. I can't do that, at least I don't know how to do that with propane uh, or with kerosene. My understanding is they're either on or off where you set a thermostat and it just maintains that. But with my diesel heater and that uh, modification that's coming, I can actually turn it off. You know, I can turn it off when it's uh, above freezing here and I can turn it back on again uh, when it's dropping below freezing. So, you know, the level of control is actually just brilliant. Now, naturally, the diesel heater needs a power source, and the power source it's connected to is actually the uh, 200 amp hours worth of lithium iron phosphate batteries here that are also powering the ham shack, the radio equipment, uh, the computers, everything. So, mm, when, you, when you first start up the diesel heater, it can pull eight or nine amps, uh, just starting up that glow plug in the cold. Uh, after it settles down, uh, it draws about an amp, you know, maybe uh, 1.15 amps uh, when it's on, like, you know, midway maintaining the heat or actually heating up the room. Now, to be fair, if I were using a kerosene heater or a propane heater, I wouldn't have that DC overhead, but I would have the problem of carbon monoxide here in the ham shack which I don't want. Also, the problem of moisture with protein, with, sorry, with propane, which I also wouldn't like. But um, we have to factor in the cost of, uh, of powering the diesel heater. There's a fan and there's a glow plug. Uh, basically, that's it. And this is the reason for the 200 amp hour uh, update. And uh, I have two more of those batteries coming. So Pretty soon, we're going to be pumping out to over, uh, sorry, we're going to have it over 5,000 watt hours of storage pretty soon. The, what is it? 400 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate storage. So this takes care of the overhead for running the, uh, the diesel heater. You know, the lights, the laptops, everything. Um, 
And we need to factor in that the cost of these, you know, extras just to protect our, think about it like insurance, protecting our, our uh, radio equipment and our computers from moisture or the cold. Yeah, and providing a comfortable, safe environment for ourselves and our lithium and lithium iron phosphate batteries. So what we're looking at now is the current for the entire ham shed. At the moment, this includes the LED lights, uh, two HF radios, one VHF radio, one DMR radio, as well as two laptops, and of course the diesel heater. And keep in mind, the diesel heater isn't always running, so what you're looking at uh, represents about double of what the station generally takes when the diesel heater is off. All right, guys, I'm starting to feel like I'm rambling on with this topic, so I think it's time to start to shut it down. Look, nobody's going to judge you for what heating solution you've come up with for your off-grid use. Yeah? So don't be afraid to share what you're using in the comments, even though it might be different from what I'm using. There's a variety of different solutions, and each of them might be good for uh, uh, me or you or someone else. So please share it. We can all learn from, uh, from what you share. The diesel heater is working extremely well for me, and I think I'm even going to get another one, an all-in-one model, and uh, use that with a uh, ice fishing tent for rapid deployment uh, winter scenarios, yeah? The problem with the lithium batteries, uh, you know, is really the biggest reason for having the, the diesel heater. Of course, we would have found a way to, uh, to put a fireplace in here or something like that, but it still wouldn't have solved the problem. I could only have that fireplace going, you know, when I'm in here. Uh, I have to add wood, or I would be a, become a slave to it. The diesel heater gave me a lot of uh, flexibility and freedom that I wouldn't have with other other heating options. Especially when we keep in mind the purpose of the diesel heater is actually to maintain the temperature, so that our lithium batteries can uh, do what they need to do. Now, keep in mind, guys, the uh, solar storage isn't the only lithium batteries we have. Think about your analog uh, dual-bad HTs. Think about your DMR radios. Think about uh, your portable HF radios like the ICOM IC705 or your Elecraft uh, KX3. All of these, sorry, KX2. Uh, all of these radios have uh, lithium-based batteries inside. So if you're charging them outdoors um, when it's cold, you might be damaging the battery without even knowing it. All right, guys, let me know what type of heating are you using? What have you chosen to heat your homes or to heat your, your off-grid ham shacks or, uh, you know, to heat any other space that you consider critical uh, in the winter or in some sort of cold weather disaster? Here we go. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. <laughs> Rock and roll. All right, ciao.